people who have experienced the Cold War firsthand, Doctor Strangelove is not just a cinematic masterpiece. It is not only possible, it is essential. In that era, almost everyone knew what MAD, ICBM, and missile gap meant. And the sight of the mushroom cloud rising hits different. A nuclear close call is an incident that could have led to at least one unintended nuclear detonation or explosion. More than one nuclear close call occurred during the Cold War period. Perhaps the most serious of these, the Cuban Missile Crisis, nearly made the common fear of everyone come true. Fortunately, mankind has managed to get through this critical period without experiencing an extinction-level crisis. This is military mechanics, and today we will look at intercontinental ballistic missiles. Between 1940 and 1996, the US spent at least $10.1 trillion in present-day terms on nuclear weapons development. It is estimated that the United States produced more than 70,000 nuclear warheads since 1945. This is more than all other nuclear weapons states combined. However, the American nuclear weapons arsenal has shrunk by 85% since the end of the Cold War. The American Air Force's decision to award Northrop Grumman the contract to replace the aging ICBM system brought the following question to mind. Is the nuclear weapons race back? Although not as prominent as the nuclear arms race of the Cold War era, the threat of nuclear attack has never been completely off the table. Russia and China are already increasing the capability and number of their ICBMs, respectively. Even North Korea has increased its arsenal, which was at roughly 10 to 20 nuclear warheads in 2018. Let's not forget India and Pakistan, who have more than a hundred nuclear warheads each. The United States has emphasized the need for a nuclear force that credibly deters adversaries, assures allies and partners, achieves US objectives should deterrence fail, and hedges against uncertain threats. Enter US nuclear triad, SSBMs, ICBMs, and bombers. Since the 1960s, U.S. nuclear triad through forces operating at sea, on land and in the air provided the necessary deterrence. The triad significantly lowers the threshold for an attack against the U.S. homeland. Also, the triad's diversity enables mitigation of risk if a particular leg of the triad is degraded or unavailable. Eliminating a leg of the triad would weaken the combined strength of the force and simplify adversary attack planning. For example, without ICBMs, a conventional only attack on the limited number of submarine and bomber bases could significantly degrade the US nuclear arsenal without rising to the level of nuclear use. The triad is intended to ensure that no adversary believes it could launch a strategic attack that eliminates the US's ability to respond and inflict unacceptable damage. US ICBMs are the most responsive leg of the triad. This fearsome force is on alert 24-7, 365 days a year, and controlled by ironclad nuclear command control and communications. U.S. ICBMs are spread out in 400 hardened underground silos. In addition to this, there are another 50 silos kept in warm status. These are assigned to three separate military bases, presenting an intractable targeting problem for any potential adversary. ICBMs can be launched and reach targets within minutes, creating a nearly insurmountable targeting problem for adversaries. Should the United States need to respond quickly to an emerging attack, US ICBMs provide the most rapid response option with assured connectivity to the President through national command authorities. ICBMs also provide the ability to upload additional warheads which can hedge against technical failure in one of the other legs of the triad or respond to adverse geopolitical developments. 
Although the ICBMs can carry up to three nuclear warheads, each is currently loaded with only one. This provides targeting flexibility, especially for some scenarios of an adversary's limited use. Finally, the day-to-day -day alert of ICBMs takes the burden of a daily alert posture off the bomber force. This frees up many bombers from continuous nuclear alerts to concentrate on potential conventional missions. The hardened and dispersed nature of US ICBMs requires a potential adversary to totally commit to a massive attack on the US homeland. There's obviously no other way to disable all US ICBMs. This enhances the power of deterrence. However, most of the systems that compose the triad are operating well beyond their original design lives. The land leg of the triad are Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles. Having undergone multiple life extensions, they were first deployed in 1970 and have been operating for 50 years. After conducting an analysis of alternatives, the Air Force determined that a replacement ICBM would be similar in cost to a Minuteman III life extension program. For the MM3 to be usefully extended, the United States would need to replace a number of major components. Even if accomplished at reasonable cost and on time, this would still fall short of the department's requirements. Some of these requirements are accommodating modern safety and security features and technologies. On the other hand, the ground-based strategic deterrent will incorporate low-risk, technically mature components. This will feature a modular architecture that can incorporate emerging technology to adapt to rapidly evolving threat environments. And it will be easier to maintain than the MM3. Finally, the GBSD program will also modernize the launch facilities. This will improve command and control and increase safety and security. These advantages will save on costs and provide great value as GBSD operates well into the 2070s. The Air Force finally announced a name and designation for this new intercontinental ballistic missile system. The new name is LGM-35A Sentinel. Sentinel is being developed by Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman is currently planning a first flight test at the end of 2023. It will join the ranks of Atlas, Titan, Minuteman and Peacekeeper as the land-based ICBM missiles that have maintained America's nuclear deterrent since the early 1960s, beginning with initial operational capability in 2029 and full operational capability by 2036. In these days when Russia is making nuclear threats more frequent, we understand better that the twilight of nuclear weapons is yet to come.